tonight on News 6, an arrest was made in regard to the shopping center shooting. And there was a gun found in the locker of a Greenbrier Junior High student after school hours. The Conway Airport could potentially be certified as a national airport. And we will recap uh, events that happened here over the weekend on campus. All this and more News 6 starts right now. Good evening, I'm Madison Gaffner. And I'm Blake Weaver. Before we get into tonight's news, let's take a look at the weather with Jason Gregory. Jason. All right, so let's take a look, quick look at our headlines. We have sunny skies all week this week, and it's going to be some warm days and chilly nights. So you might want to have to grab that jacket um, if you're going out in, on any night. And the temperatures are going to drop um, near the low 40s, so you're definitely going to need a jacket thin. And we also have a great air quality this week with the level at 38. Now back to you, man. Oh. A Conway man was arrested on Monday in connection with the shooting at the Conway Common Shopping Center at the end of this last month. Nason East, 18 of Conway, was arrested on a charge of capital murder by the Conway Police Department with both Little Rock and North Little Rock assisting in this arrest. An investigation by responding officers and detectives at the scene identified East as the suspect. The victim was since been released from the hospital. According to the police, a court date has been set for 9 in the morning, October 11th. Last Monday, Greenbrier Public Schools Superintendent Scott Spainauer posted a statement containing information from a police report conducted on September 23rd. Police were notified of a handgun that may have been hidden on the Greenbrier Junior High campus at 8 in the evening. The handgun was located by school administrators and law enforcement 20 minutes after the no notification inside a student locker. The student responsible for the handgun was taken into custody by Greenbrier Police. All lockers and school buildings are thoroughly searched before the school week. In light of heightened numbers of school shootings, the Faulkner County Sheriff's Office announced two new resource officers last Tuesday for the Greenbrier School District. Deputy Stephen Cano was appointed school resource officer for Wooster Elementary School. Cano said he is looking forward to giving back to the community in his new role as an SRO. Deputy Adam Croy was also appointed the SRO for Spring Hill Elementary School. Croy was promoted to patrol deputy back in November of 2020, and while he enjoyed his role, he said he is excited to start this next chapter in his life as an SRO. Deputies Cano and Croy will join Deputy Stephen Ferguson in the FCSO's Resource Office Division. The Arkansas Forestry Division has issued a burn ban for the city of Conway. This is a ban on the open flame burning of trash, leaves, and brush. The ban is subject to weather conditions and the end goal being to prevent wildfires. There are four di different risk levels with corresponding colors. The green being low risk and favorable conditions. Yellow is a moderate risk and advised caution. Orange is high risk with fires starting quickly but spreading slower. Red is an extreme risk with fires starting quickly and spreading fast. With Conway being in the red, the Forestry Division has given no clear time frame as to when the ban will be lifted. Conway Regional Airport has a goal to become a recognized national airport by the end of this year. To become certified, the airport needs to have at least 5,000 annual instrument approaches with 20 international flights and at least 11 jets on hand. And they plan to have 12 by the end of this year. The airport currently receives $295,000 from the bipartisan infrastructure law. If they get the upgrade, they will receive $750,000. Another thing the airport is looking at with the upgrade will be adding a restaurant as part as the addition to the current airport. When we come back from the break, we'll have more news from UCA including the recap on Bear Facts and Family Day. More on the arts here on campus and within the community. And how students can gain hope. All this and more, News 6 will be right back.
When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., chances are every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. I am blind, but I think? need not see. Mm. I know this road is there for me. If I'm really free. Over the weekend, the admission and enrollment services of UCA welcomed prospective students and their families with open arms at the traditional Bear Facts event. The Bear Fair started in the Reynolds Performance Hall, where students were able to learn more about each degree program. Tables were also set up in the Student Center lawn for potential UCA students and their families to speak with the registered students' organizations here on campus. They were able to eat lunch in the Christian cafeteria, tour the whole campus, including the dorms, and, even, and some even received scholarships. This fair gave them a sneak peek of the UCA campus life and how they could get involved during their upcoming college years. They also could attend the UCA football game where the Bears had an impressive win. Also over the weekend, UCA Bears invited their families to join them for the UCA football game. Not only was it family day, but band day as well. Parents and family got to see all that the University of Central Arkansas had to offer for their students. Events took place all around the Estes Football Stadium. It was organized by the recognized student organizations and UCA faculty and staff. The campus was crowded with all kinds of activities, free food, and goodies. The UCA band made an appearance during the tailgate before the game to get the UCA fans ready for the game at four. The day ended with a victory for the football Bears team and a nice way to close the 2022 family day. October is an important month for a lot of people, but October is also the month of breast cancer awareness. To promote this awareness, the Students Activity Board has uh, uh, organized an awareness activity called Hope the Hippo Stuffable. During this event, you can swing by the Student Center lawn and grab a pink hippo stuffable, pink hippo stuffable uh, to support breast cancer awareness. These little guys are free to students, just grab and go to support breast cancer. The event is tomorrow from noon to 3 in the afternoon. The Students Activity Board says come and show your support for breast cancer. Next Thursday, Reynolds Performance Hall will hold the Wind Ensemble and Symphonic Band concert organized by the Music Department. This concert will include two bands, the Wind Ensemble and the Symphonic Band. The band will perform Dope, a new composition by Cathay Copeland, excuse me, Copley, a young composer that made his debut at his university in Georgia in 2017. The music Dope was performed for the world premiere yesterday, Sunday the 2nd. A $10 ticket is required to attend this concert, but it is free for UCA students and staff. Tickets for veterans, the military personnel, seniors, and children are offered at a discounted rate. You can call Reynolds Performance Hall to get your tickets. This performance will begin at 7.30 in the evening and will be an hour show. Illusionist Kevin Spencer will be coming to Reynolds Performance Hall on Friday, October 7th and 10th in the morning and on Saturday, October 8th in the afternoon. His shows are known for using magic to help change the lives of children with disabilities such as autism, developmental and emotional behavioral disorders. Uh, he is a leading authority on art-based programs that help improve the lives of people with disabilities. This is a family-friendly show that uses magic and storytelling to entertain his audience. If you are interested in buying tickets, call the Reynolds box office at 501-450-3265 or toll free at 866-810-0012. After the break, we'll go to Jason Gregory for a closer look at this week's weather. News 6 will be right back. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with the app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. 
reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. In terms of the hate crimes, I think there is so much more work to be done to make that choice to continue to love. Let's take a look at what's going on weather-wise. Tonight is going to be a pretty chilly night at 49 degrees, so if you're going out tonight, uh, you'll need a jacket because it'll be pretty cool. Um, wind's going to be pretty calm at 5 miles per hour, and also it will be an early sunset at 6.50, 6 p.m. This week is going to be a fairly sunny week, and it's going to also going to be pretty warm throughout the week. Um, we have temperatures in the mid to upper 80s um, at the beginning of the week, and we also have lows from the low 40s to mid 50s. As you can see, uh, tonight, uh, tomorrow night it will be 49 degrees, and tomorrow night it will be a little bit warmer with, uh, with 57. And towards the end of the week, the temperatures will drop at a lower 40s, uh, lower 40s um, and to the upper 50s. So uh, we have rain and, rain and thunderstorms moving in the west um, to the Midwest, and we also have some on the east coast. Um, a little mixed pre precipitation as well back in the west, and we also have a cold front passing um, through the south, lows twisting to the front. We have fronts um, in the east pushed to the Atlantic, and if we look at our three-day map, we still have some uh, rain. We still have some rain down south, and we have a rain still on the East Coast, as well as the Atlantic. And when we come back from when we come back from the break, I'll take you through what's happening in UCA sports. Don't go anywhere. News Six will be right back. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Mama! Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Mama! Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Tough losses can hurt, but in order to win, you have to keep moving forward. Central Arkansas would need to do just that if they were going to have any chance of beating a tough Austin P team who is coming off a four-game winning streak. The Bears will get the ball rolling early with a touchdown courtesy of junior wide receiver Christian Richmond. The governor's offense would be no match for the Bears' defense in the first half, holding them to just six points. The good news continues for the Bears in the second half, with less than two minutes into the third quarter, wide receiver Miles Kit Denton would score a 44-yard touchdown. Two more unanswered scores for Central Arkansas would occur moments later, including a touchdown on a 64-yard punt return by Jared Barnes. The Governors would then have a response at the tail end of the third with their own Cam Thomas returning a punt for 92 yards. Austin P would not be out of the woods just yet, as the Bears still had a sizable lead of 28-13. to they would not get a chance to come back as it continued to be all Central Arkansas. The Bears would rack up 21 more points in the final quarter, resulting in an upset blowout with a final score of 49-20, killing that winning streak. Quarterback Will McEvlin had his best game of the season, throwing for four touchdown passes and 261 yards. Saturday, the Bears will hope to continue this success, taking on the Lindenwood Lions. Kickoff is set for four in the afternoon. The men's soccer team faced off against the Lipscomb Bisons on Saturday. Things did not start off well for the Bears. The Bisons scored first on a penalty kick, then moments later they would score again. The Bears would do everything they can to score before the half ended, but it just couldn't happen for them. The Bisons added insult to injury in the second half, scoring yet another goal. The Bears did not have an answer for them and it ended up being a shutout by the Bisons with a final score of 3-0. On Sunday, the Sugar Bears volleyball team had a conference matchup against the Bellarmine Knights. The Sugar Bears would take the, in the, take the first set and it looked like they could, have, they could have their work cut out for them, barely edging the Knights 25 to 21. 
For the rest of the game, Central Arkansas played effortless, effortlessly, easily taking the next two sets, 25-13 and 25-17. Jamiriana Hall and Mackenzie Vernon had an amazing game with both of them leading the team in blocks with three each. Alex Stumbaugh led the team in aces with 16 for the day. Friday, the Sugar Bears will head south to Jacksonville, Florida to take on North Florida in another conference matchup. Game time is set for 2 in the afternoon. That's it for your sports. After this break, we'll catch up with the rest of the news. I grew up sitting on the pharmacy counter reading the Wall Street Journal. I didn't become a pharmacist. I married one. It was a while before we could roll out the vaccines. The person first on the wait list never got to take the vaccine. He wound up contracting COVID and passed away. It is frustrating when I see people spreading misinformation. We make sure that people have accurate information so they make their own decision. We share life together. We're all a family. If you love me enough to tolerate my perfect little pets and all their glorious dander, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. The Conway Cycle and Pedestrian Board had a public meeting regarding aggressive motorists and animal encounters. The meeting was held last Thursday and was focused on bicycle safety as well as tips involving bicycle accidents. The board talked about the best things to do when agonized by animals is to call animal control, as most animal attacks are never even reported. When it comes to dealing with motorists, try to get the tag number and report it. However, do not confront the motorist as it might lead to tension and conflict on the road. The board hopes that as Conway's bicycle population increases, so does its safety. Looking for, park par <laughs> looking for parking around UCA campus excuse me, can be difficult, especially for new students. So our reporter, Kat Hernandez, went to find the rules of campus parking. With the start of the new year, we see plenty of new faces and cars moving around campus. Whether one is a returning student or a fresh face, here's a refresher and update on UCA parking. Um, I think that UCA is definitely a growing community as far as the number of students that we're getting each year. And so I feel like each year there's more need for more amount of parking spaces. And so right now it feels like our parking lots get really overcrowded and it's really hard to find a spot, a spot to park that's close to where you're going to be going to class. Um, and that can be difficult with like running late to class and all that stuff, trying to search for a parking spot in a really crowded lot. Um, so I asked around to see what students know about the parking on UCA. I know like the placement of where you're supposed to put your parking permit. I know that as a student who lives on campus, I can park in green lines and white lines. Um, and that's pretty much all I really know. I then talked to UCA PD on the complete rules for UCA parking. Of course, for resident parking, you're going to have your green decal, um, and residents are going to be allowed to park in any spaces that are, are uh, painted either green or white. Um, our commuters, uh, somebody who doesn't live on campus, are going to be allowed to park in white spaces there. Uh, we're going to tell you to stay away from uh, the yellow spots which are our faculty staff spots as well as uh, any purple uh, painted lots or spots which those are reserved for our visitors. Um, for faculty and staff parking unless there's a sign that says that that lot is enforced 24 hours a day students are allowed to park in those lots after 4.30 um, and before 6 o'clock so from 4.30 p.m. to 6 a.m. they can park in those spots. Um, and on the weekends as well, but they just got to remember they need to get those cars moved um, before um, before six o'clock because they will start enforcing those. Um, if there's a spot that says reserved, then it's reserved, and so they can be ticketed for parking there. Um, I believe that's one of the changes this year is that a lot of the visitors uh, visitor spots and parking um, has been changed to reserved for visitors. Um, and so we're going to want to you know, make sure that we, we heed those signs um, and stay out of those. This is Kat Hernandez with News 6. 
The University of Central Arkansas is offering educational seminars for faculty and staff to attend. Some of the workshops focus on diversity, leadership, service, and more. This year, the diversity seminar is titled Depolarizing the Conversation, Engaging and Challenging Dialogue. The diversity on-site course will be discussing the challenging aspects of diversity and effective communication. The program also addresses working in a diverse environment and the challenges and rewards in doing so. The next seminar will be on Thursday, October 6th in the Student Center. It will be at 9 to 1030 in the morning in room 215. Faculty and staff in the university can register and keep an eye out for upcoming seminars on UCA's website at uca.edu slash training. Mayflower City Council discussed reimbursement costs for the Mayflower Police Department during its regular meeting. This comes from a recent officer and department trained being hired by another agency. Uh, within 18 months after the officers were trained, Fort Smith Police Department hired them and now owes the MPD more than $6,303 in reimbursement costs. The MPD also owes the Perry County Police Department $12,272 in reimbursement costs as well at, from an officer they hired from, Perry County de, from the Perry County Department. The MPD requested a little over $5,968 for the remaining costs due after they received payment from the Fort Smith Department. The council unanimously approved the proposal to MPD. The Faulkner County cleanup will take place on Friday from 8 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. The cleanup will continue on Saturday starting at 8 in the morning and ending at noon. There will be several locations across the county accepting stuff including the Conway Expo Center, the Valonia Street Department, and the Guy City Hall. The Conway Expo Center will also be hosting an electronic waste recycling drive on Friday and Saturday from 8 in the morning until noon. Conway Police Department is having a hiring event uh, that is taking place from October 3rd to October 14th with an agility test on October 15th. The test consists of a written exam, and if you're selected, the candidates will do a timed Phase 1 and Phase 2 agility test for, uh, to qualify for employment. Once the tests are completed, the recruits will undergo a background check with visual and psychological exams, drug tests, and a hearing test. The City of Conway is looking to hire the best to represent the city with professionalism. If you are interested in applying, contact Lieutenant Glenn Cooper at glenn.cooper at conwayarkansas.gov. So Blake, I heard that you attended Bearfax over the weekend. How was that? Uh, yeah, so I'm actually a student advisor for the communications department. So I actually got to take some of those prospective students and actually show them around this studio that we're in right now. Wow, that's awesome. Well, I also know that it was your big birthday weekend, mm -hmm. the big, um, the big 26. 26. Yep. So tell me a little bit about your birthday. Oh, I can't tell you much about that on the news, <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll just have to go for, for now. <laughs> okay, well, I wanted to also tell you about family day. I was able to go to the game with my parents, and the Bears played a great game. There was lots of parents there, lots of grandparents and siblings, and the band did an amazing job mm -hmm. in their performance with allowing their siblings to come on and other school bands to come on the field Yeah, it's always and something with cool them. to see. It's always something cool to see. I, I, whenever I was back in the band, I always look forward to family day. It's a big, big thing. Well, that is it for our news today. If you missed any stories or want to get more details, visit us online at ucanews.live. If you have any questions, comments, or story ideas, you can email us at ucanews6 at gmail.com. Also, keep up with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm Madison Gaffner. And I'm Blake for... Jason, uh, Jason, <laughs> he's our sports and weather and all of us here at News 6. Thank you for watching and good night.